This is what you should feel. You are what you should feel. <laughs> One time when my daughter and I first moved into my house, it was a weekend and she asked me to go to her friend's house and play. Because it was 8am on a Saturday, I told her, sure, got her coat together, gave her some money, said goodbye and she left. I went back to sleep for a couple of hours and then woke up and started cleaning like I always do on weekends. I was in the bathroom, cleaning the toilet with my music on. And suddenly I hear the front door open and close. I just assumed it was my daughter and was assured it was when I see the blur of her pink winter coat walk by the bathroom door. It was a fluffy ski coat, so I heard it too. In passing I say, hey, what are you doing home? She didn't answer me, so I just assumed she didn't hear me. She was in the room for maybe 30 seconds and I saw her walk back by the bathroom. I asked her if she was leaving again. She didn't answer. I said louder, be home before supper, I love you. And she said I love you too, and closed the door. I realized that I had trash I could have her take out to the trash can while she was home. So I went to the front door to catch her, and realized that her house key lanyard was on the table beside the door and the deadbolt was locked. My house key on my car keychain was on the table too, but the deadbolt that has to be locked with a key from the outside was locked. I opened the door to look outside and no one was there. I kind of thought that maybe she just stayed home. So I looked around the house for her. She wasn't anywhere to be found. I checked the back door and the deadbolt was locked there too. When I called her, she told me she was playing with her friend and that they had been building a snowman all day. I asked her if she had been home, and she said no. I asked her again if she was playing a joke on me, and she said no. She didn't take her house key, but didn't think of it as a big deal because I would be home when she got home and could let her inside. I still couldn't figure out how she locked the deadbolt, so I asked her that. She told me that she had locked the bottom lock only. At this point, she was starting to get scared, so I played it off as a misunderstanding and told her I loved her and I would see her when she got home. I still don't know who that was who walked by the bathroom door, and I have no clue who or what locked that deadlock without the key. The only two keys that exist to unlock our doors were sitting on the table right by our door. To this day, I still believe it was my daughter's doppelganger. We had many experiences in that house with ghosts after that day. It got bad enough at one point that I purchased a bigger bed because my daughter wouldn't sleep in her room without me. We eventually moved, and I blame it partially on that damn house. I was never really scared, but my daughter was. And it was really a helpless feeling. This happened last year, around September. I was sick at the time. I was off from school, stuck at home with the flu, and feeling like absolute garbage. Everyone else was out. Mum was at work. Dad was on a business trip, my sister was at school, and I was trying to get some rest in my room. I left the door open because, you know, moving around felt like running a marathon. So I took a nap, because what else can you do when you're in that state? When I woke up, the house was super quiet, and then I thought I could hear a kind of shuffling from down the far end of the hall. The sound of footsteps started getting closer and closer. I didn't think much of it until I saw my mum walk right past my door. As she walked past, she was looking right at me, unblinking, 
directly into my eyes. But she didn't stop to check on me or anything. Then it happened again, like five minutes later. The same thing. She walked by, held eye contact, and kept going. I figured she was home from work, but it freaked me out because I thought, why isn't mum saying anything? I grabbed my phone to text her and that's when I saw the time. It was only 11.15am and there it was, a text from my mum asking if I needed anything from the store because she was going to the supermarket after work. I was seriously creeped out. The rest of the day nothing else happened but I couldn't shake off what I saw. I also couldn't rest much after that and closed my door immediately. Later on that evening I told my mum and my sister what had happened. I thought they'd say I was just seeing things because of the fever, but they both got really quiet. They both told me that they had seen something like that before too. My sister seeing my mum and my mum seeing my dad. We couldn't figure it out and even though nothing like that happened again, we still talk about it sometimes trying to make sense of it. We moved out of that house a couple of months after this and nothing else ever happened. I was taking a nap during the day and I woke up to my husband standing beside my bed. Why I woke up at that particular moment I don't know. Strangely enough, he was drinking a 20 ounce bottle of soda and shaking his hips back and forth as if to say, ha ha, I have a soda and you don't. Like a child would, I suppose. Immediately, I became aggravated and sat up and yelled, Lewis, go away and leave me alone. As I watched, fully awakened right before my eyes, my husband started to disappear from the feet up in a fashion that looked digital. I began to be able to see that he was made up of little squares and they were quickly disappearing from his feet up until he was completely gone. I have never been so freaked out in all of my life. The other thing about this vision was that it was completely deathly silent. There was no sound at all and it was almost like there was a vacuum or as though the thing itself made everything around it even more silent. For example, my fan that was beside my bed didn't seem to be making a sound. I immediately went upstairs and called him on his cell. He was, and had been all day, in Alabama, working. He is a railroad supervisor. The things I know for sure are, one, that thing was not my husband. Two, I was definitely awake and not dreaming because I went directly upstairs after seeing it. And three, I know the everyday term for these things are doppelgangers. I want to know more. What exactly is behind a doppelganger? What or who is it that makes them occur? Also, if anyone is an expert on these things, I'd be interested to know why I chose to imitate my husband and why the dorky childish soda dance. I've seen paranormal things in the past, but to me, evidence of a ghost makes sense. You know what they are, and pretty much where they come from. But this thing is just too bizarre to me. What creeps me out the most though, I wonder how long it stood over me while I was sleeping, before I sensed it and woke up and saw it. I have a friend who's really into this occult kind of stuff. I don't know if she practices anything or her habits around it. I just know she likes strange things. She likes to buy antiques and even has an old lamp from a dead lady's house. She was a little strange but I've known her since she was young so that stuff didn't bother me. We stopped talking for a number of years because we were growing up and going to different schools etc. But she randomly messaged me one summer and asked how I was doing. She invited me to do a little get together and we caught up. I learned that she was sensitive to spirits and didn't think too much about it then. 
after spending some time with her, I invited her to my house for a sleepover. We were laying in bed. We shared the same bed, just chatting and stuff before sleeping. The lights were off, and we were just giggling, talking about random stuff. All of a sudden she hides under the blankets and is terrified. I ask her, what's wrong? She tells me that she sees a man at the end of the bed and asks me to check. I look and see nothing there. I tell her I don't see anyone. She kind of gets quiet and didn't really talk much for the rest of the night. I shook it off and thought maybe she was just tired and decided to get some sleep myself. As I'm drifting off to sleep, I hear this creepy whispering. It was indistinguishable, but lasted for minutes. And it kind of freaked me out, so I put a pillow over my ears and tried to reason it as just white noise or my ears ringing. But it was just freaking creepy. The next morning, I get up to use the bathroom. She's still sleeping. I use the bathroom in the hallway and leave the door slightly ajar because I was too lazy to close the door. I see this man, looks like my grandfather who lives with me, dressed in white walk past the door once. Then, a few seconds later, walks past the door again, towards my parents' room, and I hear the door shut. Now, my grandpa hardly ever goes into my parents' room, so that was already sketchy. And it was weird that he was kind of hovering back and forth like that. I was so sketched out, I walked straight out of the bathroom, not even turning off the lights, and trudged over to my parents' room. I see absolutely no one in there except my dad snoring away, wearing a black shirt. I check the closet. I check their bathroom. Nothing. Also, my parents' room is at the very end of the hall, so there are no stairs and no way to exit. So nobody could have gone past me, walking towards my parents' room, without me 100% running into them. I run downstairs, it's about 10am at this point, and I ask my mum where my grandpa is. Turns out he's been out all morning, at an appointment. I asked her if she'd been upstairs in the past 5 minutes. She says she's been downstairs, since 7am. I'm obviously freaked out by this point. My friend walks down and I tell her everything that happened. You know what she says? She goes, oh, him. I give her a puzzled look. She explains to me that ever since her get-together, I brought him with me, and that he hasn't left her alone since. She also mentioned that the more I hang out with her, the more I'll see things. I noped the heck out of there. Haven't seen her since, although we do still text here and there sometimes. Never saw him again. I have had a few odd experiences throughout my life, but nothing that I would necessarily label as paranormal, at least not until recently. Full disclosure, I love watching specials about the paranormal. I enjoy reading books about supposedly true hauntings, as well as movies about ghosts, demons, etc. That being the case, I am familiar with some of the classic telltale signs of a location that is purportedly haunted. Bad smells, vertigo, cold spots, whispers, etc. But again, taking into account what I know about those things, and considering it is a hobby of sorts to read about them, nothing paranormal has ever happened to me. That all changed a couple of weeks ago, when I started dating a woman I met while at my job. I had not dated in a very long time. Divorced, single dad, pushing 40, a little thick around the waistline, etc. So it was a surprise that someone as young and pretty as she was asking me out. She's 26, but I do look much younger than my age. We hadn't gone on that many dates, maybe three or four over the course of a few weeks. So even though we communicated a lot via texts, email, Facebook, etc., we actually had not spent very much time together. So... I was taken off guard that she asked me to help her out with a family matter. Her grandmother, who had been living on her own private property in a camper for twenty-some odd years, just her and a lot of cats. 
My girlfriend. I use that term loosely because, again, we were still just getting to know each other. Was one of the few members of her family that still made any effort to visit their grandmother and described her as very eccentric, solitary, and somewhat spiteful. Recently, though, her mind seemed to be going. On the rare occasions that anyone went to see her, the consensus was that she had basically gone senile, and nothing she said made any sense anymore. So they made the decision to put her in a nursing home, which is where I came in. My girlfriend, who I will call Trish, needed me to help her clean out her grandmother's camper, save anything that was worth keeping and dump the rest. So we rented a flatbed trailer and she navigated to the property which is in Oscar, Texas. She and I are both from Austin. We arrived about 1pm in the afternoon in mid-August, so it was pretty damn hot. The camper was really small and had only one window air conditioner unit to cool the entire thing, but there was no longer any electricity to it. So we opened the door, which was not locked, and started going through all her stuff. There was cat poop everywhere, and it smelled terrible. Plus, there were hundreds of flies. The cats were all gone. It looked like they had been coming and going through the little flaps on either side of the window unit. I started moving stuff, and found several decayed dead kittens, tons of roaches, fleas, ticks, spiders. I mean, this place was a complete dive. My girlfriend was really embarrassed and said we would need some cleaning supplies, not realizing it was this bad. Since we arrived there in her vehicle, she drove into town to buy the supplies and I decided to stay behind and keep working. While I was there alone, I figured I would haul all the big stuff out to the flatbed, which she left behind for me. The minute I started moving furniture to throw it away, the air in the camper got noticeably cooler. At least cool enough for me to notice a difference, given how hot it was outside. The fact that there was no electricity for the window unit, plus very little ventilation, made it that much more noticeable. I ignored it at first and thought nothing of it. There was a pond nearby and I figured maybe a nice little breeze had blown over it towards me. I went about my work and began hearing limbs in the trees around the camper creaking and snapping. There was no wind though, so I figured it was probably squirrels, birds and whatnot. I took a break and went outside for a soda and continued to hear snapping and crackling all around me. It's probably not uncommon but the area was unusually still for there being so much noise. I went back inside and felt the immediate drop in temperature. I suppose it could be that when we first got there the sun was shining directly on the camper. So maybe the sun had just shifted and it was no longer in direct sunlight. Maybe. I continued digging through old boxes and found a medium sized leather trunk with a rusted padlock on it that looked like it was ready to crumble to dust. I didn't want to throw away anything valuable so I busted the lock off with the heel of my boot and looked inside the trunk. I found the weirdest assortment of crap I had ever laid my eyes on. Various rocks, crystals, candles, lots of little bottles with god knows what in them, odd string, strips of leather. And then I found a small skeleton of some kind of animal, probably a cat, but it had stuff written on the actual bones. At this point, I paused and began to feel extremely uncomfortable. It was like the air got heavier and the sounds of insects outside had stopped and I could feel a pressure against my eardrums. The hairs on my arms and neck stood on end. It became harder to breathe and I felt something that was almost like an electrical charge in my stomach. I know enough about this type of thing from reading about the paranormal that I could guess I was not welcome there. So I left the camper and waited outside for Trish to come back while I tried to wrap my head around what had just happened. She was gone for what seemed like a really long time but finally came back and she was like, oh, I thought you would have had it all cleaned by now. Obviously she had stalled, hoping I would do the lion's share of the work, but I digress. Anyways, I told her about what had happened and she was like, um... Okay, and? It sounds like the heat got to you. 
Are you feeling lightheaded? Well, yeah, but for a completely different reason than heat exhaustion. I asked her if she thought what I described was strange, and she seemed amused that I had gotten scared, but didn't answer. I asked why someone would write on an animal skeleton, and she blew it off attributing it to her grandmother's diminishing mental state. Like I said before, she was gone for a while so we didn't have a lot of daylight left. Now that we were on a time crunch, she angrily began throwing anything and everything into the flatbed, no longer caring about looking through stuff to see if there was anything that we should keep. And really, there wasn't anything worth salvaging. It was all rotten. After a few hours, we did manage to get it cleaned out, but it became clear that cleaning this thing was not going to serve much of a purpose. It was barely standing as it was. I recommended that she get someone to just haul the whole thing away and leave whatever was still in there, which is probably what we should have done in the first place. She wanted to take one last look around the camper and make sure she didn't miss anything. Here is where things got really weird. I was securing the stuff we decided to keep on the trailer when I heard her ask, what are you doing? Not looking up, I said I was just making sure the stuff wasn't going to fall out. She then turned to look at me, her eyes as wide as I had ever seen them, looked back out the window she had been at, screamed and bolted out of the camper. I was like, what? What is it? She told me that she swore she had seen me walking on the opposite side of the camper. Not just someone that looked like me, but me. I told her to wait there and I walked around the corner of the camper. I can't really be sure, but for a brief second or two, I do think I saw the outline of a person before it disappeared. According to Trish, this man looked exactly like me, so she thought it was me. She said it even turned and smiled at her, which is when she asked what I was doing. When I answered from out by the car is when she freaked out. We both agreed that, at that point, there was definitely something off about the place. Not just the camper, but the actual property. I told her I don't know what her grandma was into, or what she did all alone out there for 20 years, but it didn't feel like a good thing. We left around 8pm, just as it started to get dark, and never went back. That isn't quite the end though. Last week, about a month after this all happened, Trish asked me if I would go with her to visit her grandma in the nursing home since, again, no one else really ever went to see her. I said sure, and we drove to a nearby city called Temple, where the nursing home was located. We got there, signed in, and they asked us to wait while I went and got her. I was in the lobby checking email on my phone, while Trish and her grandma visited together in the common area. Trish poked her head around the corner and asked me to come back with her so I could meet her grandma. On our way back to her room, Trish said her grandma looked great and seemed to be in really good health. She was lucid, not babbling, and was generally happy. But the minute she laid eyes on me, she flipped out and started screaming. Why are you here? What do you want with me? Why did you follow me? The nurses had to restrain her and they asked me to wait back in the lobby because me being there was upsetting her. I have no idea what to make of this. First Trish sees someone that looks just like me, then her grandma sees me and thinks I am following her, as if we had met before, even though I had never seen her before in my life. I have no explanation for any of this, but it all seems too coincidental to brush off. Given what I felt on that property, the weird occult style stuff I found there, Trish seeing someone that looked like me, plus the way her grandma reacted to seeing me, is just bizarre. Anyways, that's my story. I was not so much scared by any of it as I was fascinated. On a side note, Trish and I agreed a few days ago that dating each other just didn't have that spark we were looking for, but we remain good friends. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. If you have a story to share, 
please send it to my email in the description below. This channel is mostly made up of stories sent in by viewers or people they know. Another way to support the channel is to sign up for my Patreon, where you can watch my videos ad-free. More perks will be added in the new year. Also, I will be adding new designs to the merch store, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you all for your continuous support. And remember... Papa loves you. <laughs>